Hello there, it's the start of a new week. You're watching the Pulse on the Joy News channel. This afternoon, we bring you part two in a latest of our series on the hotline documentary, A Nation That Begs. We tell you how Ghana moved from being a hero to zero uh, less than 10 years after becoming a trailblazer in the euro bond market. It's all coming up here on the polls. Uh, we also get to hear from Deputy Finance Minister Mona Kote uh, on her thoughts uh, as far as the assurances from government is coming through that the economic recovery program is on track. Uh, also coming up in this package, candidates continue to file nominations for the New Patriotic Party's flag bearership contest between 10 individuals. We're live at the headquarters of the New Patriotic Party with all the updates, plus find out why uh, one of them was turned away today. It's all coming up and also we're looking at the floods of trauma. A special report on the issue of perennial flooding here in the capital, Accra. Another big problem is that the poor drainage in our towns and cities which leads to flooding during the rainy season. It is time to deal with these long-term problems and find long-lasting solutions and we're doing just that. We talk about the floods and more here on The Pulse. Be my guest. John uses independent, fearless and credible and bless us. We are back in the Chifi. Please stay. Well, this afternoon, the economy is already back on track. Just months. Well, this afternoon, the economy is already back on track. Just months. And this is a policy by government which was deluded with a lot of assurance, assurances from the government that he is doing this exercise to protect we the depositors, we the investors. It is going to protect our investments and our on the horizon this afternoon we put uh, that to scrutiny and also hear from uh, former deputy finance minister monacote but first though uh, an inside documentary later the only option was for ghana to turn to the imf for a bailout package <laughs> professor Bopin sounded the alarm bells he said going to the imf was inescapable i personally don't think that um, the IMF is a long-term so- uh, solution to our problems. And the reason I say so is that we've been there 16, 17 times. Is that okay? And practically every three years and some few months, we've had to go to the IMF and all of that. But as we always say, what takes us to the IMF has to do with the fundamentals. And as we, s- we sit right now, everything points to that. The calls to register for an IMF bailout became intense. After seeing Article 4, after seeing the COVID report, Article 4, 2019, and the COVID report, and seeing the fiscal gap which is there, that was when I expressed the view that maybe it's time for us to go, that's how far back, to go to the fund, because it's not just about COVID. But we got all the COVID money, as I said already, and we could have used it to make a correction. Because the COVID money we got for ECF was 913 or so, you know, million US dollars. Here yeah, you're talking about six billion. Why was it sufficient to do the correction? Something fundamentally wrong. Government's position was very simple. No IMF program. It has so much hope in using domestic means to turn the nation's economic fortunes around. We are not going to the IMF. Whatever we do, we are not. The consequences are there. We are a proud nation. We have the resources. We have the capacity. Don't let anybody tell you. In the raging storm, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata was insistent that government won't subscribe to an IMF program. If because of political pride and the rest of them we don't want to go, that is a different thing altogether. It should not be our first resort. But we have not demonstrated that on our own we'll be able to impose a fiscal consolidation that would elicit the appropriate response from duty bearers as perhaps we have seen in 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 our relationship with the fund if we could do that why not for 60 something years of independence we can't keep going to the imf anytime we go to the imf i feel 
that we, we I, I i feel we've lost something right as, as a sovereign country and the rest of them but imf doesn't impose itself on any country through countries own actions and inactions mismanagement of the economy and the rest of them takes them to to the imf so if we arrive at that point where homegrown solution has probably failed to 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 get at the same result we'll do that i believe that in 2014 when the government made a call to the imf it wasn't because it was their first resort right yeah the fundamentals they did so my position has always been once the government on our behalf whether i like it or not since we are not going to the imf then my position changed then show as alternative IMF cannot save us, right? Because we've done IMF 16 times, getting 17 times now. We are we were on an IMF program for the best part of this government until recently, right? Up to the end of 2018, this government was in an IMF program. The good thing, though, in that respect is that it does show that being an IMF program imposes more discipline. Because this government itself argues that all the way until early 2019, they were doing brilliant. What that means is that they were doing brilliant during the IMF program. That's an important point. So to make the case as if IMF is a problem is strange. If you did IMF from 2017 all the way to uh, December, end of December 2018, and the economy was doing well as per your own analysis, then what is the argument anymore about IMF being a poison or a toxic element that you need to avoid? The government's attitude tends to be that, oh, we don't need IMF because IMF is bad in a way. They don't say it directly, but it implies that it's bad. And I'm arguing that from 2017 January, when they came into power, to 2018 December, that's two years, they were running an IMF program. Now, when you ask them about their financial track record and their performance, the government likes to say, now on to COVID hit, we're doing brilliant. And I'm saying that if that track record is one we are so proud of, you did that under an IMF program. Despite government's insistence, the honorary vice president of Imani Africa, Bright Simmons, was hopeful government's best bet was seeking an IMF support. But beyond the political ego, was there any historical experience preventing government from approaching the IMF for liquidity support? During 2018, when you were under, you were under an IMF program, you were growing at 8.3%, right? You were doing fantastically well on inflation. Exchange rate was stable, right? We did not see massive unemployment based on some IMF restrictions or whatever it is that you've been calling it. You did the IMF program for two years. We know these are some of the reasons why you don't like the IMF. In April 2018, the government was forced to acknowledge that it lied to the IMF about its external arrest and was forced to apologize, right? You have to write to the managing director of the IMF and apologize that somehow you forgot whatever somebody, some data was not there, blah, 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 blah. Of course, that is why you IMF. But that extra discipline, that extra scrutiny may not be something that is to your liking, but we have to look beyond your ego and think about a country. Yes, the IMF will insist that you disclose the data. You will not be able to play the games that you play with us here, where you say something, where is the data, you, you refuse to disclose the data. They will insist. So that might not be very pleasant for managers in the government, but that does not mean that it's against the national interest. We should distinguish between IMF program elements that may not benefit Ghana, of which nowadays there are not that many because you yourself have to come up with a proposal and you yourself have to negotiate it. And then IMF program elements that may not benefit the government ministers and officials that may be responsible for designing and implementing it. I think the two are not on the same scale. And while the IMF will not transform Ghana, while the IMF will not change Ghana's fortunes dramatically, our argument is that worse from the things that's already happening well so that's what you should be expecting later tonight when the full um, documentary the nation that begs uh, is um, at exactly 8 30 p.m here on the joining news channel and available on all of our social media platform uh, joining us uh, for a conversation on this uh, we have isaac kofi J himself who produced that documentary we're also uh, fortunate to have uh, the former uh, Deputy Finance uh, Minister Mona Koti joining us. Hello. Thank you for spending some time with us. 
Uh, let's start off uh, with Isaac, who's here with us, because Isaac, you've been looking at the data. The finance minister has also been speaking about this whole uh, IMF um, conditionality and the program itself. So walk us through some of the key um, items the finance minister is pointing to, and let's situate that in uh, this very documentary that you've put together. Right, so the finance minister's message was very simple, that even with this $3 billion IMF bailout uh, program that we are running, it is to, it's supposed to support government-owned domestic program. So what they call the PCPEG, the post-COVID you know, economic recovery program. And if you look at what the finance minister has been saying, it simply tells you that if you look at the debt restructuring that we did both at the domestic and external. External, we are still in talks uh, with our creditors. Uh, but if you look at the domestic level, we said bingo, it was successful at 85%. But per what we are reading from the finance minister's statement and his engagement with the media yesterday, you can have a sense or a feeling that government will still go ahead to engage other creditors in the domestic space. So a second yes. debt restructuring Absolutely. may, may take place. May, maybe in the they, will, days. They, they will not term it that way. Right. But if you've already said something successful and you are coming back to engage other people. Right then we probably would term it as, you know, a second debt restructuring, whatsoever they would want to call it. Right. But as we speak, you know, government wants to go to the negotiation table uh, with some, you know, groups. First one is organized labor. Why? Because organized labor, in the first exchange program, they were given complete exemption. Now, government is saying, come back to the negotiation table for fresh stocks. Mm. This is supposed to help government to attain that, you know, uh, 55% Debt to GDP ratio they mm. want to achieve by in the medium term. They feel if you know organized labor is not on board, it will be so difficult to reach this. IPPs have been also asked to come back to the negotiation table for fresh stocks. Why? Because if you look at <coughs> external creditors who came to invest about 1.6 billion in mm. our economy, we actually restructured those external people. They right. are as part of the domestic bonds, mm -hmm. and you are. Looking that euro bond markets, you know, the debt that we owe the euro bond markets are mostly pension funds. Mm. So if you are going there to restructure pension funds in the euro bond market, then you must start. And in fact, I, I, what, what's more striking to me is the fact that we may have to go back to this topic about the pension bond holders mm. because it's not out yet. They are but not out of the woods. They are not. They are not. But, you know, you were given complete exemption and now <laughs> you are being asked to come back. I spoke to Abraham Kumsen, the you know, Federation Secretary, and he says that government really wanted to do this in April, but because of the May Day celebration and all that, they couldn't go to the table uh, for fresh stuff. No, government surely will place the call, and they are certain that when government mm. plays the call, they are going to suffer. Isaac, we'll, we'll talk about what's likely to happen tonight when we watch The Nation That Begs, but I want to bring in uh, Mona Kote, who's also been listening into the conversation. Um, Honorable, the, first of all, your thoughts on this fear that we may have to do a second round of uh, internal or domestic debt restructuring. Are you, first of all, surprised about the development? Thank you very much, Blessed. Good afternoon to yourself and to your listeners. Um, no, I'm not surprised at what Isaac has just referred to. I'd like to just put our conversation in context. So we know that last week the IMF staff were here and they had a lot of conversations with the members of the Ministry of Staff and Government. And their assessment, as they said, pointed to some positive signs of stability with, as we all some tailwinds that have come from natural resource prices going in the right direction. We've seen Brent crude and WTI prices, oil prices, stay below $80 per barrel. We've seen gold price do very well, closer to $2,000 um, than $1,900 per ounce. So in terms of our receipts on natural resource, we continue to do well. We've seen fuel prices go down. We also saw the front loading of some of the conditions that the IMF had asked government to make, especially in the area of tax reform. So we saw new taxes come kick in in terms of revenue administration, again, which was another strong area. We saw uh, work on that beginning. We've started to see, um, for example, property rates being actively collected by GRA, or let me even say at least bills going out. So we'll see how the collection also goes. 
So um, we are seeing new tax policies, as we've said, in terms of the foreign debt restructuring. I'm not even quite sure if that is completely concluded. Maybe Isaac can speak to that. But w- from what I gather, it is close to conclusion, but not totally concluded. And that uh, gives assurance to the IMF to give us, um, the, 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 as it were, the drugs that we need to stay in intensive care. Then on the domestic front, which you asked me about now, um, I believe that negotiations are still ongoing. I don't know that we are close to the end of that at all, because what is on the table now still does not sound like what pensioners especially will accept and what uh, labor will accept. So I believe that that is still a work in progress. And in as much as the, dev- uh, the government is caught between the devil and the deep blue sea, they will have to make some compromises. They cannot continue to dip into a market and then make bondholders and bill holders unhappy. I mean, we've talked about treasury bills that uh, went on auction recently, and we saw that we now have an inverted curve. Uh, where the uh, sh- shorter dated bills have a much higher interest rate than the longer dated bonds. That is a signal to government that they need to do much better. They cannot continue to talk about haircuts and on interest and even change of maturity. You know, that kind of credibility is gone between an issuer and an issuee. So that has to be resolved. Mm. Therefore, I believe that there are still issues to do with debt service sustainability, which for the IMF is a big issue. And also for those of us who hold treasury bills and bonds, mm. is an issue if you want right. to just... Uh, in fact, the target that government set for itself um, was, was short of the IMF expectations. We're hovering somewhere around, uh, mm-hmm. around 97 billion, Isaac, yeah. correct? 97 billion. billion. That, that's what we're working with. Uh, but it's now... Yeah, not- it's we not clear that we're, not, we're nowhere close to that. Uh, I mean, first of all, what does this point to for you? Uh, for some, and the experts have raised the issue about uh, transparency on the part of government in terms of reporting economic figures, that is also beginning to come up in this whole conversation. So, Blessed, um, first of all, what I'd like to say is that, I mean, for those of us who have been in those offices before, we knew that it was time to go to the IMF. And that is because we were in a rabbit hole. And we needed to dig ourselves out of that hole. We've been in that hole several times. So this will be the, seventh th- the 17th time, I'm sorry, that we found ourselves in this rabbit hole as a nation because we have problems with our fundamentals, our fundamental economic structure. We have problems with that. So with all that has gone on and the unfortunate reckless management of our economy over the last five or so years, we are now in a rabbit hole that we are finding very difficult to even come to the zero mark, to the top. And the IMF has told us up front what we need to do. We are struggling to do it and to get there. Yet I continue to hear the economic management team and the Ministry of Finance team, including the minister himself, praising themselves and saying they've done well. I'm not sure what it is that they've done well. It's work in progress. And we are all praying for them that they will be able to get to that zero level where the IMF is planning to take them over the next three years, get to that zero level, so that as a nation, we can look forward to a bright um, future, bright golden future. So at this point, really, they'd still have some conditionalities to meet in order to get the other tranches of the three billion that they're expecting. You know, we already got 600 million. Punches that are yet to come, and there are still milestones to be met in order to get it. So there is a lot of work to be done, and I don't think it's time to pat ourselves on the back at the moment. This is the time to work hard to get to the zero level. Once we are the zero level, we can start looking at planning for what is next. In fact, we should have planned for that already. What is next? What does Ghana need next? Mm. So my direct answer to you, Blessed, is that there is a lot of work ahead of us, until we get the liquidity that we need, the total $3 billion. And remember, it's a loan that has to be repaid. And the IMF is making sure that by the time we get to that zero, we are able to repay that loan and any other loans that we would have taken out. Mm. So it's not free money at all. Uh, in, fact, a, the, in, yeah, in fact, the finance minister points to some 
uh, million, uh, billion that we're expecting uh, from our international uh, partners. We'll, we'll talk about that in detail. While at that, the president has also been speaking this morning. He's uh, rather taking on the international ratings agencies. I, I just want us to listen to him briefly, and then we open up that leg of the conversation. And I can comfortably and convincingly say this. As the AU champion for African financial institutions and leader of a country, which recently had to deal with one of the most difficult periods in its post-independent history. Difficulties which were exacerbated by the reckless behavior of rating agencies that engaged <laughs> engaged in pro-cyclical downgrades, shutting Ghana out of capital markets and turning a liquidity crisis into a solvency crisis. Afri Exim Bank, under its counter-cyclical response mechanism, provided timely support to help Ghana navigate the macroeconomic management challenges, worsened by Russia's war of aggression in Ukraine in an orderly manner, when suddenly we realized we were alone. The country which had become, quote, the favorite child of bondholders and had successfully gone to market at the height of the pre-COVID-19 downturn, was suddenly shut out of international capital markets. It is often said that you know who is truly your friend when you are in trouble, and is rightly stated by Dr. Martin Luther King in that often cited quote, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends, unquote. When you're dealing with powerful international financial institutions, it is important to have your own powerful financial institution. And it is so important and significant that I'm here today, just a few months after that liquidity crisis, hosting the 30th anniversary celebration of Afri Exim Bank. What I have just said about the great relationship between Afri Exim Bank and Ghana, most of my colleagues in this room and across the continent and the Caribbean could say the same thing. Also, that's President Akufado uh, speaking at the annual meetings of the Afri Exim Bank, which is underway here in Accra. In fact, uh, I was in that hall when the president was making that statement, and I'm just wondering why the president will decide to go on a warpath uh, with the Rating international agencies. ratings agencies. And in fact, we'll take the thoughts of uh, Monakoti shortly. But Isaac, help us with the trend. Since 2022, we've seen that downward yeah. trend. The international ratings agency not, not being too favorable. Yeah with uh, a country that used to be the poster boy, if you want to call it that way. In the Eurobond markets. <laughs> I, I, I'm actually surprised because in 2021, when we became the trailblazers right. in the Eurobond market. And I love, I, I love the description yes, from the president, yes, by the, the darling boys. Yes. You know, it was these same ratings agencies that mm -hmm. gave us those positive outlook and that all the creditors wanted to lend to us, even at 0%. And so if at this point we are in a different situation, and they are using those same methodologies and they are giving us downgrades because of what is happening. I, I simply don't understand why the president has a problem with the ratings agencies. Maybe he has his own data, he has his own facts. Well, for instance, but, let's take a look at, is it Fitch, for instance? Fitch, yeah. I mean, very, very, very consistent. You know, ratings it, was, for us. It, was, it was in only 2022 right. that governments suffered about 11 downgrades. Mm -hmm from Fitch, Moody's, S&P's. Downgrades kept hitting us in the face mm -hmm. continuously. And at a point where even in RD, I have never seen Ghana in you know, restricted <laughs> default position before. Like, junk, 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 junk. Mm. That was in 2022. And that's why you're putting up a nation that begs. In fact, uh, let's not take the detail out uh, for those who would be watching later this evening at 8.30 p.m. But Mona, your take on what the president has just put this is his beef with the international ratings agencies and how unfair they've been to us. Will, will the standards change, by the way, if we opt for an African-led ratings agency? Uh, listen, I think Isaac has said it all, but um, coming from a finance background, let me just put one thing on. No matter where you borrow from, okay, 
the lender will have an economic MIC model, a financial model that they run, and they will look at their credit factors and decide, you know, on you that, yeah. borrow you are, you are, and lending to you. Yeah, you are. Credit agencies who will speak to some of the issues that you as a borrower have in your economic space, and that also helps the lenders in, you know, managing their the, the amounts that they give to you. So the credit agencies are a necessary part of the lending business to sovereigns and other corporates. Therefore, we don't um, only say they are good when they give us a good rating and then get upset with them when they don't. <laughs> I mean, when I was in office, there were times when they gave us good ratings, sometimes they downgraded us. But what it did was it gave us feedback on what to work on and what to make better in order that we can get better prices for what we borrow and also how to be debt sustainable and how to best service our debt. So I think that we should take the feedback from credit agencies in good faith rather than the way that it was done. I think you and I both know who the reckless managers have been and definitely not the credit agencies. Um, Blessed, I want to say one thing now just in case I'm not able to say much before the end. What is very important for us now? What is our next step? At the end of this three-year program, we should be at a stage where we know exactly how we want to transform our economy. We need a deep structural transformation of our economy. How do we do this? We need to pivot clearly from being a natural resource supplier into the international market to becoming one that adds value and one that also ensures food security at home, use of what we produce, and sale of what we have in excess to have cash, liquidity, which is one of the issues we are having now. As simple as this may sound, it is difficult to implement, and we appreciate that. We've been in office before. The idea is to gain wisdom from council, and I think it's time for our managers of the economy to, to have a consensus from all, like the way we had when, when we met, you know, we had the, the meetings in Akosombo and so forth, and invited all of them and come up with a plan that will take Ghana from the next three years, when we are now at ground zero, to the next level of our transformation. We can no longer be the Ghana of 1957. We have to be the Ghana of, nine, of 2026 or 2027 when we finish this program so that we can be stronger. The program is always there, the IMF program, is always there for us to go to. But we must go stronger this time. It's a pity that this time, different from 2015, we are going so weak. But for me, it does not matter. It is how we rise. So I think that is what is important mm. now. We okay. need people from here and right. transform into a stronger. As economy. we wrap up, your expectation ahead of uh, a nation that begs. But two, of course, we saw your boss, uh, Seth Tekpe, featuring in that uh, documentary, your expectations. And also, as we wrap up, can we... Uh, going forward, sustain our economic recovery in a way that uh, will pull us completely away uh, from running austerity plans in the future? Yes. I'll answer your last question first. Yes, we can sustain our recovery from 2026, 27 onwards with a new economic management team. Definitely not with this one. Yes, um, zero, heroes to zero. That tells a sad story about Ghana. We've had so many opportunities to do well. You heard Seth and other ministers speak. One of the things Seth talked about was the fact that we had talked about going to the IMF already. Um, this economic team of economic managers didn't think so. Last minute, they changed their minds and went. That's fine. It's good. What is worrying is how all our financial buffers have been eroded. I mean, we had uh, debt reserve accounts. We had so many accounts set up. The energy sector levy that we were collecting, and it was doing well in paying down um, debts within the energy sector, was all eroded. It was even collateralized and borrowed against. Where are all those monies? The COVID monies that came in, still not accounted for. I think we need to hold these economic managers, the current ones, accountable, so that even as we go through the program, we'll come out stronger. So I do see that we could come out stronger, able to sustain our debt levels, able to uh, keep our budget deficit low, not maybe not at zero, but bring it down and grow the real sector of this economy. Ghana can do well depending on the economic managers 
that we have. Okay, so we'll, is, we'll subject that to the 2024 elections, but for now we're grateful that you're spending some time with us uh, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. And that's uh, Mona Kochi, Dep- a former Deputy Finance Minister, joining us uh, here on The Pulse. As we wrap up, um, Isaac, what are we to expect tonight? Well, so tonight is the part two of a nation that begs, we've already spoken about it, from hero to zero. So we are telling you how Ghana became that darling boy that President Ekufuadu was talking about in the Eurobond market to a point where we had to beg other people to beg other people to forgive us of our debt. It's a three-part series. We've already had part one, the Genesis. You can go and find it and watch it on social media platform. Tonight, we'll be airing the part two at 8.30 a.m. here. PM. PM, sorry, on the Joy News channel. And then next week, we'll bring you the final part, which is Painful Haircut where we speak about Ghana's info debt restructure where people actually lost their investment. Okay. Uh, I've, got, I've, got, I've got that going on already with the haircuts. <laughs> Thank you. Isaac uh, Kofiebe uh, joining us. And you want to make time for a nation that begs later tonight on the Joy News uh, channel at 8.30 p.m. Despite government's uh, many promises of uh, ensuring floods do not continue to wreak havoc uh, in flood-prone areas, some persons say uh, they live in fear uh, at the gathering of the rains because uh, every drop in their uh, vicinity results in flooding, uh, affecting their poverty and health, aside emotional trauma as well. There's more in this uh, latest report by my colleague, Hannah Odami. Another big problem is that of poor drainage in our towns and cities, which leads to flooding during the rainy season. It is time to deal with these long-term problems and find long-lasting solutions. And we're doing just that. This sound of rain and its accompanying breeze sends many to sleep, snuggling safely and comfortably in a firm textured bed. For others, however, it is an announcement of despair. These days, when it rains just between two to three hours, then we get afraid. This has been Irama's fear for years. The gathering of the clouds does not bring she and her family any joy. They rather experience fright, confusion, and palpitation. It is very painful. I must tell you how I honestly feel about this situation. When it begins to rain around 5 p.m. and continues till around 8 p.m., we all get anxious. We get scared even to put our heads on our beds. And yet we are helpless because we seem not to have any solution. All we can do is to watch the rains drain into our rooms. An occupational hygienist, Dr. Roland Srebo, talks about the health hazards associated with the flat and dampness that a Rama and others who are in similar situation are susceptible to. And sometimes after the flood has receded, the, the damp environment can also promote allergic reaction that can uh, easily uh, promote asthmatic attack. So in effect, these are some of the things uh, that flooding can cause. And let's not forget Malaria is also knocking uh, on our dogs af- after flooding because after flooding we realize that uh, there may be stagnant waters within our community and this that can promote the breeding of mosquitoes and we know the mosquitoes are the vectors of uh, malaria so by so doing uh, malaria uh, infection can increase uh, during this time of flooding. But Tirama, who was born in this house, cannot move out. Her source of livelihood was mainly from renting these 14 separate room apartments to tenants. That is no longer an option because her income has greatly dwindled with no one accepting to rent a house which gets flooded every time it rains. Where is that 
And I know what it's on a two rooms or four. Not behind me. I have lots of empty rooms which I could have rented so I would earn some income. But I cannot do so because the rainwaters come in and destroy all the property of tenants. I have two rooms with a hall. I have self-contained. I have about six single rooms with each having its porch. They are all empty. Imagine how much I would have been earning from these empty rooms if I was renting them out. Yet, all these rooms are locked because of the rain. Recently, someone came to rent this particular one. But the rains destroyed all his things, so he left. It is really depressing. But there's nothing much we can do about it. Irama is concerned about the hazardous impacts of the floods on her children and grandchildren, the mental torture, the inconvenience, and the health implications. Just see these holes in the walls. We created them so that the rainwaters which enters our rooms can seep out through them. By the time I finish that work, I would be so tired. Sometimes, even after three days, we will still be collecting rainwater from our rooms. The rain seeps down into the ground. So each time we collect water on the surface, the ones beneath the ground then comes up. We keep collecting, so we don't see water anymore. Acknowledging that not all of Irama's concerns will be immediately addressed, Dr. Srebo believes some of these measures put in place can at least mitigate the impact of the floods on their health. We need to leave our compound greened. Why am I saying that? Because it's a fashion now for people to concrete their uh, compound. By so doing, the water does not get uh, space to drain or go into the soil. When the compounds are green and left nicely green, they, when it rains, the, some of the water will sink down and, and, and it, it may prevent a lot of them going. Because when we concrete our houses, our homes, it means that the water that's coming from our home is going to add up to others, other persons on, in, at the end of the day. Uh, that is what can result in a flood. And we should also try as much as possible not to build on water we. From the Kwame Chroma Circle, I am Hannah Odami for Joy News. And I am Blessed Sogam with you here on The Pulse on the Joy News channel. We're taking a break, but when we return, we'll talk about the uh, patriotic party's presidential race, which is heating up. And this afternoon, two persons have filed their nomination papers as uh, the race gets heated. I will get you the details, plus hear from some of our guests who are joining us, rank and file of the party, sharing their thoughts on the reorganization of the governing party. It's coming up here on The Pulse. Please stay with us. You will enjoy free life insurance. Oh. Free debit card, save while you spend, and an amazing chance to double your salary. A whole seven, oh. and even more consolation rewards in the EcoBank Double Salary Promo Reloaded. Vimwo, this EcoBank Salary Account sounds interesting. Oh. What do you think? Uh, 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 yeah. But maybe next time, Charlie, you know what? I do go shy my shoe. Hey. Yo, myself, I do go check my BP. Open an EcoBank salary account today for a lifetime of benefits. You also stand a chance to win more than double your salary in the EcoBank Double Salary Promo Reloaded from now till July 31st. Terms and conditions apply. Supervision of the National Lottery Authority under the Caritas Lottery Platform. The Pan African Bank. Smile, hmm? Look lively, okay? 
Smile, smile. Is the money too small? A bad stomach ruins your day. Don't let it. Take Gastron, your most effective antacid, for the relief of symptoms of peptic ulcer, heartburn, gas pain, flatulence, and indigestion. Hey guys, what are you waiting for? Let's go, let's go. Mwah. Can you bring down that smile more? <laughs> Gastro, effective relief from stomach discomfort. Manufactured and distributed by NS Chemist Limited. This advertisement has been getting approved by the FDA. Every young man in Ghana is going to be empowered enough to be the light and the heart of our society. I am committed to ensuring that these NGOs are supporting government's efforts and not the opposite. We have developed a very effective cycle of admitting and rehabilitating young women in need. I don't want to be your soldier. I don't just want to be the program. I want to be by your side. Get her ready. You're saved and you're brought here to make something of yourself. Only rule is that you stay as good girls. Our investigations here focus on organizations with a seemingly clean sheet. You will fail. You know why? Because I need to lose. that we've had news file over the weekend and uh, an interesting part of the conversation focused oh no they're out of range oh don't worry daddy i have an exam in back alex what alexa open multimedia ghana and play joy super hits radio radio joy 99.7 listen to joy fm Hits FM, Love FM, live on your Amazon Echo. Listen to your favorite multimedia radio stations live on your Amazon Echo device by saying, Alexa, open Multimedia Ghana, play Joy FM or Hits FM or Love FM. Or catch up on your favorite podcast by saying, Alexa, play and then the name of your favorite podcast from Multimedia Ghana. For a list of all podcasts available, say Alexa. Ask Multimedia Ghana to browse programs. On air. And we are back like we never lost signal. Alexa, welcome to Multimedia. Welcome back. You're watching the Johnny Channel. This is the Pulse. This afternoon, two persons have filed their nomination papers as the New Patriotic Party's presidential race uh, heats up former Minister for Agriculture, uh, Dr. Efri Kutu, and former Energy Minister, Bwanshi Jaku, successfully filed their nominations today uh, to bring to the number four. Uh, of the candidates who have already submitted their forms. Former Trade uh, Industry Minister Alan Kujicharanti is in the race. Uh, we have uh, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud who was the second uh, to file uh, last week. And as you may know, 10 persons actually picked up the forms to contest uh, for the flag bearership race of the coming party. But is the Vice President uh, likely to abuse incumbency as some are already raising? And that's a question that will be seeking some answers to later on the show. Uh, earlier, though, um, of course, one aspirant uh, was turned away by the Elections uh, Committee. Uh, that's, uh, of course, uh, the man that referring to who's been in the 
case for a very, very long, long time. Uh, but uh, it's unfortunate that he's being turned away. We understand a number of the issues with Mr. Preco's forms uh, are being reformed. So let's get uh, some update briefly before I get to with my guest. Samuel Mbura uh, is at the headquarters of the New Patriotic Party joining us uh, right now. Uh, Sami, w- what transpired earlier today and what can you report about this uh, ongoing filing of nominations and why was uh, Mr. Perku turned away? All right, so today we've had three aspirants filing their nominations. Uh, they include the former energy minister, Boache Jako. We also had the former uh, minister for food and agriculture, Dr. Fria Koto, coming with his team to file the nomination. And then the third person being Dr. Konedu Apreko, whom we know is going for his second, th- uh, I mean the third term in this presidential race in the governing New Patriotic Party. Uh, initially, he was actually the first person to arrive at the party office to file his nomination, but his forms were not complete, so the um, elections committee requested that he goes back to uh, get all those documents intact and then return and resubmit. So he has successfully done that, and he has gone through the entire process. I engaged him just a couple of minutes ago to find out uh, what actually transpired, and he said, oh, there was a missing document that he requested that he uh, attaches to the form in which he has done. It wasn't anything uh, serious. So, bless it. As we speak now, we have three filing nominations today, whom I mentioned earlier. But in total, we have five of them. We know the former trace and industry minister, Kojo Alan Chermantin, was the first person to file his nomination, followed by the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and the third person, being Dr. Koto Efriye, followed by the energy, uh, former energy minister, uh, Boachi Ejako. And the fifth one, been Dr. Konedu Apreko. So there are now five who have, I uh, mean, successfully filed their nomination, remaining six. About 11 actually picked the forms to contest the MPP presidential race. So at the moment, the party of is back to normal uh, because they, all the supporters have dispersed and the election committee too is also wrapping up its work to close for the day. We are not expecting any aspirants to come in. And the election committee, too, is also wrapping up its work to close for the day. We are not expecting any aspirants to come in. The skills and knowledge to tout exciting attractions of the country to foreigners. Deputy Minister for Tor- oh, uh, but uh, Yes, 11, uh, as we're picking up. But now you only have five. Do we have any indication uh, as to whether or not the rest will, will also pick up? Because that will have an implication. Yeah, so what if the remaining six file their nominations or not, though they have uh, picked forms? I engaged the director of um, elections, Evans Nemako, earlier to find out from him whether they have gotten indication from the remaining, um, whether they will come to form. He says they've not gotten that. But the, the nominations are still opened to the 24th of June. So, blessed, we have about a week to go, and we are still pitching camp to see how the developments will go. We are your election headquarters and we'll keep monitoring um, the nominations as they unfold. Uh, But for now, five in all, Samuel Mbua, my colleague, uh, joining us from the headquarters of the NPP. And in fact, one man was there when his candidate or preferred candidate um, filed uh, the nominations. I'm talking about Honorable Kenwood uh, Norris, who is the former uh, Volta Regisseur of the New Patriotic Party, rooting for Dr. Thank you for for joining us. Uh, We'll be coming to you shortly. Professor uh, Seydou Alidu is... um, the head of the political science department at the University of Ghana joining uh, the conversation. And, uh, of course, we'll be going on as we have more rank and file of the party joining us. But uh, thank you, sir, for spending some time with us again. Thank Initially, you. you were not done with the process, so you were not too confident at that time that your candidate or your preferred candidate will go through. Now, he succeeded with nominations. So how does that make you feel that he's part of the first five to have done that? Yeah, that is um, very encouraging mm. and refreshing too, because the requirements uh, are distringent, and having you know fulfilled all the requirements, that alone is encouraging. Give uh, us hope. I, I, yeah. Hope you say, uh, but you've seen the names so far. Yeah, there is um, 
Alan Chermatein, who, who's been long waiting in the line to uh, become president. Then we have also the vice president, for instance, uh, uh, joining those. You, you saw the crowd, the, the, the mum of gathering. Well, that is the, the numbers game. Yes, you know? the numbers game indeed. Yeah. That, that should scare you to say, well, I won't follow Dr. Free no, anymore. I'll just uh, the jo race join. Is not a sweet, <laughs> not as sweet, not as strong. At this stage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we are looking at targets. Okay. And that target is the delegates. We haven't got into the multipliers mm -hmm. yet. No, but shall we get but into you saw the numbers. numbers. You saw the numbers those at the headquarters. Are not, for, for us, the yes. veterans, it is not scary. Really? Well, of course, yes. Because if you bring a thousand people, and not even one of them have a, uh, you know, would cast a vote. Right. You know, we are not scared by that. We'll get the numbers, you know, when the time is due. I mean, in the fullness of times, we'll be talking about numbers. Mm -hmm. For now, our target is the delegates. Mm -hmm. And our delegates, we know their characteristics. I mean, they are not even people who will come in the open to, you know, shout for you when you are just... So nothing to place. worry about? We are not just, worried just about that. Just look at the names that were around when, yes. of course, uh, the vice president uh, decided to pick up his form. And, and no need, uh, I'm not fi fixated on him because yeah. of any particular reason, but because of... Um, the fact that you're saying, well, these are some of the people who don't even mm -hmm. have a voting right. But, but the MPs have a voting right, for instance. We had uh, about 120 MPs support for the know, vice president. You know, so so the, of the, the numbers are there, isn't it? I mean, they form just a fraction of you know, okay. those who are going to cast mm -hmm. their votes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have seen all of that in the past. And it's not about the first time you know, we are seeing people being whipped into line mm -hmm. you know, to do the kind of things. We are saying mm. we are saying the decision lies with the you know the, the delegates, mm. and at this stage we are talking about a special electoral college mm. that would be of course I'm confident and hopeful that others there's other big names that have not even filed yet. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen uh, you know a the biggest people. is the vice president. You agree that couldn't be the biggest. Mm. And if you are looking at it in terms, of the, in terms of the number, mm. the numbers that they have mm. you know marshaled mm. for the filing, that is not a big deal today. We were going to fall on the quiet. But there were supporters, people who have the votes, who defy the earning money down poor to be present at the party headquarters on their own volition. Not even a single bar or taxi was placed at the disposal of anybody. But you saw the trunk of, you know, crowd that came to meet, you know, doctors filing of nominations today. It was huge. We, we, we less, you know, thought that could happen. On people's own listen, you know, more constituency chairmen, particularly from Greater Accra and nearby, you know, constituencies came to greet us in spite of any early money down. That is indicative, and these are the people who have the votes, mm. and those are the people we are counting at this stage. Not, not, not the crowd. Not the crowds in the streets, yeah. <laughs> well, I understand that Dr. Kaviru Mahama, who is a technical advisor at the office of the vice president, is also joining the conversation. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mahama, you, you've, you've had the point. Uh, there are more and more people joining the race now. Uh, it's now five. Are you still confident that that crowd you brought to the headquarters is an indication that your candidate is, is the best out of the names we're hearing of? Mama, you'd have to unmute so, so we can unmute, hear the point you're making. Yeah, so good afternoon, and uh, good afternoon to my colleague in your studio from the camp of uh, Dr. Akutu. Like I mentioned, uh, the vice president is, is a Democrat, in fact, a liberal Democrat for that matter. He believes in competition, and before he even filed, his view is that 11 people, 10 other people are going to file with him. If at the end of the day we don't get the, uh, the, the 10 other people filing with him, the better. However, the number of people filing is not uh, uh, something that worries the vice president. He's focused on the campaign, and he's been on the, on, on the tour after the submission, and that has not changed anything. The confidence that we will win the election is still, still intact. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but then now you uh, see the caliber of people who are joining. For instance, uh, Dr. Dr. Koto Free, uh, who was then the uh, Minister for Agriculture, he was also serving on the economic management team. Don't forget that the Vice President lauded so much, indicating that the party has the men. If you have such an individual joining the race, uh, that, that will be a force to contend with, isn't it? In the, the, the confidence of the Vice President or the team uh, in the camp of the vice president 
is not dependent on any one of single government because we have sized all of them. We know what they are capable of. We know their support base. The vice president understands his support base as well. So their participation in the race is not is not something that surprises us. Dr. Akutu is a man who has served the government well. He has served party well. And being part of the contest only makes it good. But that is not to say that the vice president team or campaign team would be would be shivering because we have the person of Dr. Akutu joining the race or Alan Chiramati or for that matter, in other person. Mm, I see. Uh, so there you have Dr. Kabir Mahama pointing out that, well, it's a good name, but yeah. they're, they're not shivering at all. Yeah. So what difference will uh, Dr. Efe make in this race? Uh, have you done some research? Because he was pointing out to the surveys as, have, as being fake, you, I have, recall. Yeah, mm. We have looked at yeah. the caliber of persons who actually signed our nomination forms. Mm. We have a crisscross in this country but several last week, and when we picked our form last three weeks, we didn't just bust people to Accra to come and fill the forms. Mm -hmm. We went to all the 16 regions of this country, and the enthusiasm, the number of people who have been offering to be part of Dr. Koto's campaign, the number of people who have offered to sign his nomination forms, but we could pick only 10 from a region. Okay. That is assuring, that is refreshing. The fact remains that we are working with targets. We know those who constitute the special, I mean, electoral yeah, college. Yes. And we have the numbers. Mm. That is what is giving us the confidence. Mm. And not the numbers in the and, and when you say that, it's a story, okay, it's a rhetoric. You're just yes. putting that out there. There's mm -hmm. no fear, no science to back it. You've, I'm sure you've been carrying out your own scientific research yes. because uh, Dr. Efri uh, mm -hmm. was pointing uh, to yeah. the fact that the ones that are already out... I'm not well, I've seen the controversy. I'm not scientific. Yes. This summer, go to the movies. Projected on the side of a mountain. Discover a new favorite restaurant. Your campsite. Find yourself when you lose your signal. Discover a new playlist. Mother Nature. Make your summer special at the Kia Summer Sales Event with a dependable Kia SUV or powerful sedan. Kia. Movement that inspires. Call 800 333 4 Kia for details. Always drive safely. Event N7523. Well, well, the university uh -huh. uh, is well, not a, a, a research position. I get that. Yes. But, but what's your. The Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mark Bedou Abwaji, on development that lending rear could be affected because of the impact of the domestic debt exchange program on the operations. Grateful, Mark, you could join me on the market, please. Um, you've heard the uh, president of the Association of Bankers, um, John Dewade. What do you make of that development? Because our strategy. Mm -hmm is to surprise the party at the special delegate conference, and then we will rock. Then the game, the numbers, game, there's a danger in that one. I in don't, that I, the, mm. that, the, the, there is no... Uh, are some candidates advantage more, more than... People that. definitely will always take advantage mm. of, you know, their offices and, you know, the incumbency, whatever you want to call it. Somebody was complaining the other time about the fact that a rally was held in the party. I don't see, I don't see anything wrong with that. Right. Because... Today, after filing, we took advantage of the party's conference room to address the media. Right. We have done so. We are not scared, but everybody has his own approach to you know, the campaign. The strategies differ. That is the point. The strategies differ. We are working with targets. This is the stage we are. Especially, we are pretty sure that we are going to have more than five people. So when we scale through the stage one, Okay, where we are sure to be among at least the first two or first three, then we will rock from. So, so there. you're not confident of being number one, at least first two. That, that that's your target. That is the scientific thing. We want to be very scientific. <laughs> we are being very scientific. Mm -hmm. very and very the first will be the vice president. The vice president. I mean, first or second. He could be first, uh -huh. be and second. then your candidate counts. Yes. So, so Dr. Otto may not pulling, necessarily win the elections. Not this, in what terms? There is two tier. Mm -hmm. The psychology right. of the larger number okay. is different from the psychology <laughs> of the smaller number. And there is a reason so why. All you're seeking for is to cross first of all the special delegates. The special delegates conference mm -hmm. with a good showing. Mm -hmm. Then it can boost people's confidence. Then people can begin to understand that. All they have seen in terms of numbers do not matter at this stage. 
That is the point. Uh, Dr. Kabir Mohammed, the, the, the point about the numbers, did you pass all these people there and, you know, there are questions as to how maybe the vice president is using his office uh, to take advantage of, of, of the internal race. W why not have a plain field? I think that, uh, I mean, uh, when uh, Alan Chairman team filed a number of people followed, no one asked where he got the people from. Mm. When the vice president is filing and there was an eruption of the grass food, there was a massive, the euphoria was so high and people came across the country, even from the diaspora, to support the vice president. People are raising questions. And for me, I understand. I understand because if you are in a competition and you are a rival or you are a competitor, it seems to have some advantage by way of numbers, by way of sheer number of MPs who are supporting your you are, you are rival, you be you have concerns. Wait, man, listen, this is a contest. And a contest, a vice president, even let's even assume that let's even assume he has decided to ask people to the ground. What prevents other candidates from doing that, you know? So, I mean, someone's strategy should not be your concern. How do you also be able to send a, well, how are you able to send a signal to the people to know that they, look, they are in support of you? So, but, but are you even sure, are, are you even sure that these numbers matter uh, to, to uh, the special delegates conference, first of all, and also the larger group of the delegates will be electing? They would have the, the voting rights to decide who becomes the leader. My brother, you'll be a political new fight to think that 120 parliamentarians supporting you doesn't mean anything. You'll be tickling yourself and be laughing at you at the wrong side of your mouth if you think that members of the diaspora boarding their own ticket, coming all the way, coming to support the process, doesn't mean anything for the country. You'll be tickling yourself if constituency election, I mean executives, area coordinators, police executives, etc., who you speak, I mean, whom you speak for interviews, at the ground, then they declare their support for the vice president. You think they don't matter? Then you are not in the contest, okay? So I mean, the numbers matter. The caliber of the numbers matter. The the the, the, the characteristics of the people behind you—they all matter in an election. So anyone thinking that we, I mean, the numbers don't matter and they are doing targeting, I'm, I'm sure that is their own strategy. You don't, we don't have any right to question their strategy. But I think yeah, so that, that it doesn't make us it doesn't make us new fights. <laughs> we are not new fights. Right. It is rather a new fight mm -hmm. who will think that at this stage you could bring everybody from the streets, you know, to shout at party headquarters and that will translate into votes. But the people point are, is that these people do not do not matter, matter at this stage. Mm -hmm. That is the point that we are not concerned about the numbers anyway. Our camp is not concerned about those numbers. We are not concerned about those numbers. Our strategy is to work towards targets. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to numbers, who we'll get there? And we'll see whether we'll be able to you know, mobilize the numbers or not. That's why I said that it is their strategy. Yeah, their yeah, strategy, but not being a new fight. We are not a new fight. Because it's a new fight to think that a vice president, because the president is a vice president, he will win. We have had a vice president in a contest before, 2008. That was a vice president in a contest. We have seen people who were weeping to lie. We have seen all of those things before. You are also here to check the Dr. Mahama? Dr. Mahama? Okay. It uh, looks like uh, we've, we've, we've lost. D Dr. Mahama, are you still there with us? I'm with you. I'm with you. Yes, yes. So we'll ask you briefly. Mm -hmm. The point I'm making is that the point I'm making is that the vice president, the vice president filed his nomination. The number that came to support the vice president is important. The vice president was mindful of the fact that we have a special delegates conference that will probably come on before the main delegate conference. The vice president coming to file his nomination form with the support of majority of members of the majority, I mean, caucus of parliament being behind him, they all matter. That is of his embassy. That is his embassy. These, these are the people <laughs> who, who, will the the entire 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 who will in any way vote in the special delegate conference. And people are being moderate. It's okay. I mean, when you listen to him, he's basically trying to say that we are privileged to be part of the first fight, which is okay. You can, some people will not do anything and still be part of the okay. first fight because at the end of the day, the majority of the voters, I mm. mean, if three people work hard and the third person just only put their hand on the track, the track will move anyway. Okay, okay. so okay. Here, here's, the, here's the case. Since you're talking about the five, we know that that's all we have for now. So granted, there won't be any special... 
Congress. But the likelihood of a sixth person joining the race is high. Yes, six or more. Right. So if that happens, are you still confident? Would you want the special delegates uh, conference approach? Because many are praying that you avoid that. Look, the special delegates conference is a constitutional provision, right? I would be happy, and many of the candidates who will be poor, who have filed their nomination would be happy that we, do not, we don't go to the situation where we'll have a special delegate conference. You know, a lot of energies will be expended, a lot of Salvadors will be thrown, and some people will not be able to contain the momentum, the heat of the campaign, and their words and utterances could jeopardize the whole campaign. So those of us on this side would believe that, look, we can avoid unnecessary drama. We can avoid unnecessary, I mean, internal bribery if we are able to do a special delegate conference. Mm. But that said, that said, if many people are expressing interest, if more than five people have expressed interest, Democrats as we are, liberal Democrats as we are, we are, we have, the Constitution provides that. Okay. Article 2 of the Constitution states that we must go for a special delegate conference. And we are ready and we are prepared mm. to have that. Okay, then. Um, thank you so for joining us. So yes. There will be no winners, even though there will be losers, there will be no winners in the special delegate conference. Mm. So that is just to see the numbers. Okay? The main conference contest. contest is the national one that will take place in November. I mean, what's your candidate bringing on board, Dr. Free? For many yeah. um, who do not know about him and how well known he is within the NPP, yeah. uh, what, what can well you say known, about He's him? well known within the party itself. Probably he's not made so much noise. Are you saying about that? Because very, we, you know, we hear very, all the names very, around. Mm. He's among the candidates. He's the most approachable. He's one person that most party people, serious party people, can relate with. I have accompanied him to several places, including Parliament, mm. last week. Okay? He's approachable and has been doing his work on the quiet. So when the records come out, you know, like we have filed... Mm. The party will, the people What's the stake in the party? I'm asking that because many candidates have, have, have campaigned to say, okay, I did this for the party. I supported the NPP this way. His background, his background is, okay, his NPP, is our tradition. His father is one of those founders of our tradition. Bafo Akutu. Bafo Akutu. Right. Okay? Mm. Then beyond that, as an individual, he's, con- he's been a member of parliament. He's you know, be a ranking member on the Food and Agriculture Committee of Parliament and all of that. He's been the chairman of the Manifesto Committee of the, you know, that brought us to power mm-hmm. and all of that. He's an agricultural economist, a member of the economic management team. So he has a very strong background and his vision, his two-front vision, one is for the party, one is for the nation. The one for the party is to build a strong, vibrant, independent, financially independent party. A party that can stand on its own, mm-hmm. whether in government or in opposition. Okay. That is the party's the, message. The, the, the party's vision. Mm-hmm. And it's been driven. I mean, is that division has been right. driven. Mm-hmm. You know, it's beat for this. Right. Then the things that we have the comparative advantage as far as agriculture is concerned. He said that we haven't even scratched the surface. the surface of the advantages that agriculture holds for this country. If cocoa, being that was brought to this country in somebody's pocket, will have become the mainstay of our economy. Then what about other tree crops, something like rubber, but, but, that but will what? give us more? Yeah. Okay, he hasn't, we haven't given it the necessary attention. We haven't given it the public resource commitment. But, but while you're doing all of this, I hope that as a campaign, you're mindful of the fact that you have an opposition party that had a relatively smoother role in picking their next leader. They are far ahead of you in terms of selecting a candidate. Uh, you do not want to drag the process by bringing on board very big names you know, that, that, like Dr. Ekutu, who, who, who may have an impact on the elections. That will further delay your, your chances as a political party to quickly reorganize and get a candidate? Most Don't you think so? The farmers in this country identify more with Dr. Koto than anybody else. And when you hear all other candidates speak, whether it's opposition candidates or all party candidates, they will talk and talk about agricultural revolution. Mm. But the one who has the background, the right mix, the exposure, the experience, okay, 
to lead that agricultural revolution is Dr. Akoto. He has the background. He has the mix. All right. The experience. He understands the science and the data as far as agriculture unlocking our prosperity and using agriculture to finance our development, right. our education. Cocoa money brought education to Ghana. So rubber can give us more than cocoa and all other tree crops that is successfully established you know, an authority to manage. That is exactly what we are talking about. All right. And his investments will soon begin to show. Mm. And we'll see that when yes, the race we'll starts. Of course. We're yes. grateful, uh, Chairman Kenwood, for joining us. Thanks here, for the opportunity. Uh, on, on Once the again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, let's stay on politics because the National Democratic Congress is uh, candidate in the Asin North by election. James Dachikwesen has described the uh, schedule of hearings into the criminal uh, case against him as a ploy by the executives uh, and uh, also the governing party to int intimidate him. On February 12, 2022, the state charged Mr. Kwesin uh, with five counts of deceit of a public officer, forgery of a passport, uh, knowingly making a false statutory declaration perjury and false declaration. The courts presided by Justice Mary uh, Yazoo uh, has announced that the case will be heard on a day-to-day -day basis beginning uh, Tuesday, June 20, uh, reacting to the latest uh, twist of events. James Achikwesin says the development does not scare him. I said it. Even they want to give me a bedroom in the court, I said no, it's still wait for me. Hmm. They want, if they want me to see me in court every hour, which means I can't leave, they should give me a chamber to sleep there. I'm still going to stand strong and tall and fight for my people. So for JM and uh, Mahama and those guys, they all understand. They all understand what I want to do for Asinna, for my people. So for JM and uh, Mahama and those guys, they all understand. They all understand what I want to do for Asinna. Use our fundamental cost to deliver one MB of data. How many people have found one twenty two about Manu? Need your question to our mamma. I just cover cram or such as it. Just schedule time our book eleven to one. Mafia and Mapanopa, me buy a message, and it does some buy a message for five communities. You know what I mean? Because they mean a lot to me. Let that not you may buy me for five communities. Yes. Your question. Which now I'm defeat Canada I'm buying three years ago. And no one damn it to And nothing can change it. The only time I bet me as someone I seen not people say they are taking their mandate away from me. Oh my say, Papa Yafedi Abreo, Yen the My job is done. But so long as they stand behind me, I'll never relent. And then the Yomo Pebi and Yan Canada, me call community, be better than you live in. We draw my own surprise, some of the draw. That Yomo Bai, I must say, Oko Koti, I chew out to Muma. I'm saying, I'm in Jirahi. And that's uh, a confident James uh, Jachi Kwesing indicating that uh, he will not be perturbed by the. A uh, case in court uh, and also affirming that he has a vision for the people of Asin North uh, and uh, once he gets re-elected, that's the plan he will execute after relocating and reintegrating from Canada into the Ghanaian community. Uh, yesterday, the youth of uh, Daboya in uh, the Savannah region poured onto the streets demanding the removal of uh, police personnel deployed there to maintain law and order. The anger follows what they say is the abuse of some uh, six persons who were arrested by the police following the... This summer, go to the movies. Projected on the side of a mountain. Discover a new favorite restaurant. Your campsite. Find yourself... When you lose your signal, discover a new playlist, Mother Nature. Make your summer special at the Kia Summer Sales Event with a dependable Kia SUV or powerful sedan. Kia, 
movement that inspires. Call 800-333-4KIA for details. Always drive safely. Event ends 7-5-23. All party candidates, they will talk and talk about agricultural revolution. But the one who has the background, the right mix, the exposure, the experience, okay, to lead that agricultural revolution is Dr. Akoto. He has the background. He has the mix. All right. The experience. He understands the science and the data as far as agriculture unlocking our prosperity and using agriculture to finance our development, right. our education. Cocoa money brought education to Ghana. So rubber can give us more than cocoa. And all other three crops that is successfully established in you know, an authority to manage. That is exactly what we are talking about. All right. And his investments will soon begin to show. Mm. And we'll see that when yes, the race we'll starts. Of course, yes. We're grateful, uh, Chairman Kenwood, for joining us. Thanks here, for the opportunity. Uh, on, on Once the again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, let's stay on politics because the National Democratic Congress is uh, candidate in the Asin North by election. James Dachikwesen has described the uh, schedule of hearings into the criminal uh, case against him as a ploy by the executives uh, and uh, also the governing party to int intimidate him. On February 12, 2022, the state charged Mr. Kwesin uh, with five counts of deceit of a public officer, forgery of a passport, and uh, knowingly making a false statutory declaration perjury and false declaration. The courts presided by Justice Mary uh, Yazoo uh, has announced that the case will be heard on a day-to-day -day basis beginning uh, Tuesday, June 20, uh, reacting to the latest uh, twist of events. James Achikwesin says the development does not scare him. I said it. Even they want to give me a bedroom in the court, I still know it's still wait for me. Hmm. They want, if they want me to see me in court every hour, which means I can't leave, they should give me a chamber to sleep there. I'm still going to stand strong and tall and fight for my people. So for J.M. Uh, Mahama and those guys, they all understand. They all understand what I want to do for Asinna, for my people. So for J.M. Uh, Mahama and those guys, they all understand. They all understand what I want to do for Asinna. Use our fundamental cost to deliver one MB of data. Oh, by a mammon coco, mental person. Pull a pull, pull in a yes, that's a time. How many panel have a fan wanting to have a man? Need your question to have a mammon. I just cover crown more. So I just see a schedule time. I'll go 11 to 1. Mafia and Makanopa, me bar, Messabe, and that's some a buyer, Miss Ako, five communities. You know what I mean? Because they mean a lot to me. They don't know you may buy me for five communities. Yes. Your question. Which name did you Canada? I buy you know, three years ago. You know, and one of them And nothing can change it. The only time I bet me as someone, I seen no people say they are taking their mandate away from me. How much I say? Papa, I feel the abreo. Yendi wachi biwa. My job is done. But so long as they stand behind me, I'll never relent. And then the Yomo Pebia and Yan Canada, me call community, be better than you live in. We draw my Yomo surprises, I'm a big draw. That Yomo Bay, I must say, Oko caught the Achua to Muma. I'm saying, then I'm in Jirai. And that's uh, a confident James uh, Jachi Kwesin indicating that uh, he will not be perturbed by the. A uh, case in court, uh, and also affirming that he has a vision for the people of Asin North. Uh, and uh, once he gets re-elected, that's the plan he will execute after relocating and reintegrating from Canada into the Ghanaian community. Uh, yesterday, the youth of uh, Daboya in the Savannah region poured onto the streets, demanding the removal of uh, police personnel deployed there to maintain law and order. The anger follows what they say is the abuse of some 
uh, six persons who were arrested by the police following the violent clashes in the Lukula area earlier this month. Correspondent Isaac Sam, uh, six persons who were arrested by the police following the violent clashes in the Lukula area earlier this month. Correspondent Isaac Transactions across the globe, really, the yuan's share in that is just about 2%, really. So in terms of acceptability, the p- other people you would trade with, uh, would they be so willing to accept the, the yuan for payment for goods and services, really? Those are things we need to... Con- Concerns led, led to this um, protest, uh, as, as we know it. Yes, for businesses and all of that, if, if it's a lot different when it comes to a country and it's a lot different when it comes to individuals, mm. if you have a source of... Correspondents from across Africa with news, analysis, interviews and conversations from the rest of the continent. If you look at successful opinion polls, right. Peter Obi seems to be leading. Mm-hmm. So the question is if the security, insecurity causes a low voter turnout, would it impact on the fortunes of the candidate? Join us on Connect Africa on the Join News Channel. Uh, for the hiccups there. And we'll try and see if we can uh, re-establish connections with our uh, reporter Isaac Nonya, who's uh, monitoring uh, that development for us, um, which uh, evolved yesterday where the youth of Daboya in the Savannah region uh, poured into the streets demanding the removal of uh, some police personnel in relation to a protest there. Isaac, if you can hear me. I was asking earlier about uh, the background and what may have led to this um, uh, protest. What more can you say? We seem to be uh, having a challenge. Okay, uh, so the videos and visuals you see here, and some of the individuals who are uh, abused, uh, and uh, the reason for which uh, the youth for the area are asking uh, for a swift intervention by the leadership of the police, um, Ghana Police Service, uh, will definitely uh, be in that community monitoring all that's uh, happening for you. But we can uh, also uh, take a listen to some of the leading figures of. Uh, the youth group uh, making their appeal uh, earlier, but uh, Isaac is joining us uh, this time around. Isaac, what more can you report and what's the basis of the demand? Yes, uh, concerning a trip for West Quorum, they are not against the arrest of all who is suspected to be behind the attack of the police vehicles, but when you arrest anybody in town, don't touch the person to the extent that the person is injured or bleeding. And I've given three instances where on the 2nd of June, Three, three other who were arrested from the Kula were arrested and they flown on it. On the same way, about 100 people they were arrested. They said they were brutalized and tortured. And then just this reason, three others were also arrested. They were also arrested and one is on mission. So in all, all those who were arrested and are on bail, you still have about four of them seriously injured and are undergoing treatment. And I tell them to help them. So they're saying that Look, if you arrest your human being, arrest us, but stop the brutality, stop the inhuman treatment of our people. To the extent that the fear among the people, and many of them, the young men, are living in the bush and in the forest. So they want to actually stop IGP and the president to come on board and let them keep attacking people, arrest them, take them through the law, and let the end of the day, the law be for whatever that is. Mm. Uh. Uh, so, beyond this, um, what's the police saying about all that's happening? The police are news about the situation. They will respond to either the media or the, the protesters. Yesterday, they, were, they made the same available. They received the situation. 
that was presented by the youth, and all they told them was that they were restored to them from above. Grateful. Uh, Isaac Noya joining us uh, with the latest on the Lukula clashes. So staying with us here on the Pulse, uh, we'll return with some more. Please stay. of his house and sellers of his cars give him a percentage for every contract he brings. My opponent sits here and turns against the motion for once having for making money legally. Wrong! Hey. The biggest debate competition in Ghana is back. Which side do you represent? For or against the motion? Stay glued to your superstation Love 99.5 FM, Joy Learning and Joy Prime as we bring to you the biggest stage where schools in Ashanti show their prowess through debate. Rally behind your alma mater to glory as gallant young men and women from the various senior high schools in Ashanti elucidate their stance on matters of national interest. Venue is the Christian Service University College. Catch us live on Love 99.5 FM on Facebook at Love 99.5 FM, Joy Learning and Joy Prime 2 p.m. each day. The Love of Some High Schools debate, trumpeting the voice of young ones on issues of national interest. This event is brought to you by your superstation Love 99.5 FM, the Ashanti Regional SRC and the Regional Directorate of Ghana Education Service Ashanti and CHAS. This program is in partnership with Pepsodent. Rasta Chocomold from Twilliam Industries, Christian Service University College, Jackson Educational Complex, Cowbell, Madam Catherine, Freital and Fortune Rise from Wilma, and sponsored by Zest Consult, Pidato Company Limited, CBS Industries, Top Choco, Ultimate Fashions, Flora Tissues, supported by HD, the new exciting football channel is now available only on HD Plus and brings you football from around the world. Watch Sadio Mane and Daniel Kuvitre in the top weekly match of the Bundesliga 1 and DFB Cup, Premier Liga, Copa de la Liga Profesional, see Ronaldo in the Saudi Pro League, as well as daily sports news every other hour. Also, get updated on Messi and Mbappe on PSG TV and many more. Feely Feely on HD Plus Channel 151. Agro HD Plus, the Feely Feely Experience. Big Chef is back. A new addition with a new twist, new recipes, a new style, new delicious plates, and new critics. This is Big Chef Tertiary. It's a battle of Ghana's tertiary schools with the best chefs with the sharpest knife. Make a date Sunday, 25th of June, 2023 at 5pm as we outdoor the schools representing your region at the launch of the mating edition of Big Chef Tertiary.
And starting this June on Joy News, we connect you to the rest of the continent on Connect Africa with me, Blessed Suga. The issue about loss and damage reparations. Uh, how is the West receiving such a call from especially African leaders? You know, the loss is actually being borne by African countries. I will be here live from the Joy News studio speaking to our affiliates and correspondents from across Africa with news, analysis, interviews and conversations from the rest of the continent. If you look at successful opinion polls, right. Peter Obi seems to be leading. But the question is if the security, insecurity causes a low voter turnout. Would it impact on the fortunes of the candidate? Join us on Connect Africa on the Join News Channel. Last week, joining Sisaisha Ibrahim sat with uh, wife of late for Vice President Kwesi Emisata. Matilda Emisata about uh, her newfound love, which is the work of uh, God. She is now a senior uh, member of the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship as they prepare to host an international conference here in Accra. Aisha sat with her. Ghana will be hosting the 2023 version of the World Convention of the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship International on July 13. I mean, some 2,500 Christian businessmen and women from all uh, continents of the world are expected to congregate in Ghana for that meeting. We're lucky today to sit with the coordinator of the Ladies' Wing of the uh, Full Gospel uh, Businessmen's Fellowship. Uh, and she is no other person than um, Mrs. Matilda Emitatha. I'm glad to sit with you. How are you? I'm very well, thank and you. And what have you been up to? I've uh, been in my corner, minding my own business, <laughs> writing books and editing books okay. and training authors. Mm. So you are the national coordinator of the Ladies' Wing of the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship International. What, what are ladies doing in a men's fellowship? Yes, the ladies in the fellowship are called Ladies of the Fellowship. Okay. So I'm the national coordinator of the Ladies of the Fellowship Ghana. Okay. Full Gospel is predominantly a men's organization mm -hmm. as was given to the founder okay let me just put it in perspective for you an armenian american dairy farmer had a vision mm -hmm. where god asked him to form a fellowship okay based on the fact that a lot of men would rather drop their families at church and not go to church okay. and go and sit in either hotels and drink or play golf and then after the church service go and pick their families mm. so in the vision god told demo shakarian to find these men and let them congregate where they go the hotels and talk about themselves and talk about god so that what they miss out from the church they would gain. Okay. So that was the genesis of full gospel. Mm -hmm. So it was predominantly to men, and that was how they most started this. But along the line, the men were coming with their wives, okay. just not to as members, but the wives would tag along, and then the wives would serve the tea and the coffee and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Gradually, other women who were not spouses of the men who went to full gospel also find their way there. Okay. So in 2012, the international office decided that something had to be done. Okay. And so the ladies of the fellowship was formed. Mm -hmm. And in Ghana, in 2013, it was inaugurated. Okay. So just briefly to give you a background. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. So um, the, the women, how would you 
describe this one? Is it different from what we, we've come to know as uh, Women Are Glow? How different is this one? Women Are Glow is a women's fellowship. Okay. Whereas Full Gospel is a men's fellowship. Mm. Men meeting, sharing their testimonies, ordinary men, doctors, lawyers, plumbers, teachers, tailors, teachers, meeting, talking about what God has done for them. So that means that in full gospel, you must be gainfully employed to be a member. Yeah. Okay. You must also be a Christian. However, if you're not a Christian, you find your way there. One of the things that will happen to you is you'll be helped to come to the saving knowledge of God. Okay. So men meet and talk about themselves and the women are part of the men. We work on chapter basis. Okay. So for example in Ghana, we have chapters all over Ghana. I belong to the East Legon chapter okay. and the chapter has men and women. Mm -hmm. So men hold positions. Yeah. Women are not elected to positions, okay. but women can be appointed. Sure. So for example, I was appointed national coordinator of the ladies of the fellowship, okay. but I cannot become a chapter president. Okay. Yeah. So we, together with the men, meet once a week. We call it seminar meetings, okay. where we talk about things to do with business, because you know we are businessmen and women. Yeah. So we have seminar meetings where we talk about different things like careers, we talk about um, marketing, we talk about finance, we talk about any social thing you can think of. And then we also talk about spiritual things, because okay. one of the things that happens in full gospel is when you come, you will be empowered spiritually. Okay. For example, if you don't know the gifts that you are endowed with, mm -hmm. you will be helped to identify your gifts. Yeah. And you'll be trained in a way that you can use those gifts effectively for yourself and also to glorify God. Okay. So l let's talk about how effective the ladies have been in this fellowship so far. With the ladies, the national executive, and a national executive, if you like, oversees all the ladies' affairs in the country. Okay. Under the national executive, we have various ministries. We have a prison ministry, a schools ministry, we have an orphanage ministry, hospital ministry, maternity ministry, we have a um, market ministry, we have a publicity section. So, for example, under the school's ministry, every Friday, mm -hmm. the team goes to schools to talk to the children about God, morals, and things. Okay. We have a prison ministry where they visit the prisons, not just to donate food items and things, but also to engage the warders and the prisoners in talks as to how to change their lives. Okay. The maternity ministry also does the same. The hospital ministry also does the same. Okay. So that is nationally what we do. In every region, we have a ladies coordinator, a regional ladies coordinator. And the regions, if you like, mirror what is done national. So that, for example, if we are going to... Last month, for example, the prison ministry went to the second day prison. Instead of people going from Accra to go to second day, the second day ladies of the fellowship will organize everything and just a couple of people will go from Accra and it is done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, how do you then um, respond to accusations that the fellowship in general and that means the ladies and the men have not really done much or have failed in the fight against corruption and immorality in our society. Are you saying that we are being accused of that? Yes. By who? Well, I mean, because it is one of your mm. core mandates or the, one of the things that you champion, people think that you really haven't done much in that direction. You know, fighting against corruption and things takes different, different forms. In the full gospel businessmen's fellowship, we have 
what we call unashamedly ethical. Okay. Unashamedly ethical is a global movement that anybody can belong to. Okay. Full gospel as a fellowship is a member of unashamedly ethical. Okay. And what unashamedly ethical stands for mm. is to help people in whatever business you are doing, wherever you are, to be ethical in what you do. Mm. Therefore, for example, if you are a contractor and you are a member of full gospel and you are also signed on to all machinery ethical, you make an understanding, you make a commitment that in your business you will follow ethical rules and you will do your business ethically and you will not cut any corners. Okay. That, in my view, it's working against corruption and everything. Mm. And a catch a full playback of that interaction with the former uh, wife, uh, the wife of the uh, former vice president, uh, the late Pankwesi Amy Sata, on all of our social media handles uh, and also here on the Joy News channel. Uh, but just before we wrap up, we're still in that lead up to the National Science and Mass Quiz. The regionals are already underway uh, because uh, some senior high schools in the Upper East region are gearing up uh, to stamp their presence in the 2023 National Science and Masquerade's uh, Championship will definitely be watching this space and bring you some updates. But that's all we have uh, for you here on The Pulse. I am blessed as well and log on to myjoyonline.com. Lots of stories there for you to catch up on. Thanks for watching. Next is Let's Talk Showbiz. Bye-bye. Actor, actress in Africa. A woman who we have called her very own modern Yasa Toa. A woman who, after a very random tweet on Twitter, led the biggest, I dare say, non-partisan protest in recent times. She's a movie producer. She's an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, a woman we all greatly admire. And just looking at everybody in this room, it's a full house. Everybody was on time. I can say we all have great respect for her. And because of that, before I say anything else, shall we all together give a very big round of applause to the woman of the moment, Yvonne Nelson. My mother, who had been tight-lipped for over 30 years, was now speaking. Was, it was as if the fasting and prayer had broken her spell of silence softened her heart and loosened her lips. Whatever that kept her from talking